Hi, my name is Kent Lee and I teach computer science at Luther College. In this video we're going to talk about functions and how to pass arguments to functions and how to get uh, values back from functions. And in addition we're going to talk about scope which uh, is a concept that we need to understand well so that we understand how our functions work. To uh, talk about these topics, I'm going to talk about computer graphics a little bit, and in particular I'm going to look at uh, uh, polar coordinates with you for just a, a few minutes here, and so we're going to learn a little bit more about uh, computer graphics by understanding polar coordinates. We have here in front of us a circle, and uh, what I'm interested in doing is describing this point on the screen right now. Now, that point, we know that uh, uh, most of us have graphed something in our life before, and we know that that point has an x and a y coordinate. It turns out that there are other ways of specifying what that point is in a two-dimensional plane. So we can specify it with an x and a y coordinate using a Cartesian coordinate system with an x-axis here and a y-axis uh, uh, going up and so this would have an x and a y value associated with it or we can specify it in terms of polar coordinates in polar coordinates we look at angles from the x-axis measured in a counterclockwise fashion and radiuses of circles so if I want to convert this point here from polar coordinates from its angle and its radius to Cartesian coordinates the x and the y value, um, I am going to use cosine and sine. It turns out that that's the definition of cosine and sine, in fact. The coordinate here is uh, that coordinate's x value is given by taking the cosine of theta times the radius of the circle r. And its y value is given by taking the, co the sine of theta times the radius of r. So we can convert any point on from polar coordinates into its Cartesian coordinates, x and y values, by using cosine and sine. And I have done that here. Um, I have a program here that does those conversions for us. So we have polar to x. It is a function that has been defined um, to convert from theta and r to the x value, the x coordinate of that, uh, of that polar coordinate pair there. So we take r times the cosine. I notice I've imported math because cosine is in the math module, so math.cosine of theta, and I'm going to return x. You should know that theta is given in terms of radians um, to, this, to the uh, cosine function. Radians are uh, like degrees. They start. We start with zero radians here, but they are in terms of pi. So over here, this is all the way across here. This angle would be pi radians, and if I went all the way around the circle back here, that would be two pi radians. So this would be pi over two, about 90 degrees would be pi over two. Pi is at uh, 180 degrees. 270 would be uh, 3 halves pi, and 2 pi again is, is back here at uh, the same as 0 pi. So I want to convert then from, from uh, polar coordinates to the x and the y value, and I do that with cosine of theta times r. Um, for the y value, it's r times the sine of theta. Now I'd like to step over, step into and step over this program so we can watch it execute and we can see the first thing to happen is the import math. The next thing to happen is the def uh, to define polar to x, but again defining a function does not execute it, so we jump right there to the next def to define the polar, polar to y function. And then the third, the fourth statement that we're going to execute is going to go ahead and be this uh, first line of our of the main part of our program here which is going to call the polar to uh, x function here. We're calling it with two arguments math.pi and a radius of 1. Um, that should be 180, same as 180 degrees and with a radius of 1 we would expect x to be a minus 1.0. Let's go ahead and jump into that function and watch it execute. So here we can see that theta is 3.14159, r is 1, 
We're going to go ahead and execute this and find out what x is in just a moment. I'll step over that and we have a value for x and it is minus 1. Now the wing IDE has a little bit of a problem here in that it says that this x is minus 1 as well, but that is not actually the case. So we have to be a little careful here. We're in this function right now and it's this x that we're working with. And what I'm getting at is that there are two different x's in this program. We have this x that's been defined, which is now minus 1. We have this other x, which really does not have a value yet. So even though the wing IDE is showing that it's minus 1, it is not. It is actually uh, undefined yet down here. So we're going to go ahead and step over this and return. When we return, we return that minus 1 back here to this back to this function call right here and now we let x equal that minus one so now this x is truly minus one at this point and we're going to go ahead and print it while wing ide says that this x is minus one as well that x does not exist anymore because we've returned from that function so that x only existed while that function was executing and it is now gone and we'll see some more about why that is now gone um, eventually here in the next video we'll we'll learn about that but printing we'll be able to print x here and if I step over that um, I've got minus one printed to the screen I'm going to do the same thing for the function y we're going to go ahead and jump into it we're going to execute the body here y equals and if I step over that we've got a y now and we're going to go ahead and print that y that should have been zero, but again, floating point numbers are approximations for real numbers, and this is a value that's very close to zero, but not exactly zero. e to the minus 16th, there's lots of zeros before the decimal point there. Uh, looks like uh, if I were to move it over, there'd be 15 zeros before the decimal point, and then I'd have the one and the rest of this afterwards. Okay, so I've said a little bit about um, the fact that this x only existed inside of this function and that this x uh, is different from it. And in fact, that is the case. There are um, There is this concept called scope that we have to be concerned about in our, in our program. And I'd like to make sure that we understand what scope is all about here. And so we're going to look here at, uh, at this program once again here. So this is this polar to x program here um, that I brought up and I want to understand a little bit about what scope is in this program and there are a couple of different scopes within this program and I'm going to draw a line around one of them so the scope of this polar to x function is local to this area that I have drawn a line around. So that is a scope within this program and that scope is the local scope for the polar to x function. Um, there is another scope within this program as well and we'll, I'll comment more on what these scopes are in a moment but this is another scope in this program and uh, this scope here basically goes around all the rest of it. So we have two scopes in this program that we're working with here. We have the local scope for the pol polar to x function, that is its, its scope, and we have the scope for the main program um, as well. Now, when the program started, we saw that we started by executing the import math, um, then we did the def polar to x, and then we jumped down to this code down here. So when we start this code down here, we're going to define x, but before we do that, we're going to call this polar to x function, and we jump into the function, and we saw we jumped in right here. When we jump into that function, we have a new scope that is created. Calling the function creates a new scope, and that scope is what I have circled here, and that scope is called the local scope for that function. So this becomes the local scope and this scope out here becomes what's called the enclosing scope and that is again when this 
function is being executed. When this polar to x function is being executed, we have a local scope, the local scope being the scope of the function, and the enclosing scope being the scope that's outside of it. Mark Lutz, in his uh, Learning Python book, talked about the leg B rule for understanding scopes in Python programming. And leg B stands for local, enclosing, global, and built-in. Local, enclosing, global, and built-in scopes. So there are actually uh, four scopes that we do need to be concerned about. We have examples of two of them here, the local and the enclosing scope, when this function is executing. The local scope is relative to what code you're executing, so it's only this is only local when we're executing this function, when we're in the code in this function. Each scope has its own variables. So what I mean by that is that this local scope, when we're executing the body of this function, there is theta and r and x that are all defined in this local scope and they are not accessible outside of this function. We cannot use this x, this r, and this theta outside of this function because they are only local to that scope. Um, and that also means that this x down here then is a different x. So there are two x's in this program. There is the x that's local to the polar to x function and there's the x that's in the enclosing scope here, which is in the main code for this program. Um, understanding that there, are, there, there is this concept of scopes helps us to understand a little bit more about these variables and when they exist and when they don't exist. Um, so, for instance, one of the things that I need to know in this program is that if I tried in this code down here to print theta, if I were to try to print theta, or if I were to try to print r, I would get an error um, when I tried to do that. Let's take a look at that and see that that really is the case. So if I come back over here to this program, and I were to go ahead and say, uh, try to print theta, if I did print theta here, and ran this program, I'm going to go ahead and get an error here that I cannot print theta and it tells me that theta is not defined and that's because theta is not in the scope here where I'm trying to print it, where I'm trying to access it. It was defined in this scope up here in this function but when that function returned that scope goes away as soon as the function returns and I no longer have a theta that I can access um, from that scope. It's in a different scope in the program, so I cannot access it. Now, that's not always the case, though. Um, so I want to do one more thing to illustrate here. Um, let's say that we have some variable, and this it doesn't matter what, um, what we have. We'll just call a variable var x, or var is equal to 5. And let's say that up here I tried to access that uh, var equal of var equals five. So let's just try to print var here and see what happens. I'll go ahead and throw this code away, and I'll go ahead and run this, and I can see that five was printed to the screen, and that was a result of this print statement here. So var, I could print var from this scope, but I could not print at print theta from this scope in the original code that I have. Putting the print theta here causes an error, but putting the print var here does not. Why is that? Well, it's because these scopes are nested within each other. So the local scope here is nested inside of this enclosing scope, and that means that we can see things that are outside of the local scope that are in the enclosing scope. In particular, we can see that math was imported from the enclosing scope in this program, so we can access math. So there's an ordering to these to these scopes and leg B gives us that ordering. Local is the first scope we're going to look in for a variable. If we don't find it in the local scope, we'll look in the enclosing scope for a variable and see if it's defined there. In the case of var, 
we found ver defined in the enclosing scope and we we're able to print it. If we don't find it in the enclosing scope, we're going to look in the global scope. And global is basically any identifier that's defined in Python. So for example, things like the uh, like the word for and the word if, those are those are things from the global scope, if you will. They're statements from the global scope. Def is in the global scope as well. And there are certainly other things that are in the global scope. And then the built-in scope are things as well that we uh, might want to be able to access. Um, times, for example, is probably in the built-in scope as well. So global and built-in are a little bit harder to understand, but for now, local and enclosing are two scopes that I want you to understand and become familiar with so that you're able to understand when and when you, when you can and when you can't access a variable in your program when you're writing functions.